Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ, bless. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captain. Today, I'm your host, Captain Zabit. My reader is... Soldier Mahalalel. So today, we're going to talk about a question, or today, we're going to get into something for you, Israel. Whenever I'm putting a class together, I always like to think about who the audience is, right? Sometimes I might do a class for your mama, for your daddy, your cousin, right? But today, this class is for you. Today, this class is for my brothers and sisters that's out there keeping the commandments of God and know that they Israel. What could the topic be? Can we eat sea moss or seaweed? Some people are still puzzled on this thing. Is it yes? Is it no? Should we or should we not? Let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the book of Leviticus chapter 11. And we're going to start at verse 10. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 10. Yes, sir. And all that hath not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers and of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So anything that's not moving in the water is obviously an abomination, Mahalalel. It's obviously an abomination, Israel. You can't eat the seaweed and the sea moss. That's what people say. That's what people say. But let's, let's see what God says about that. Now, again, read it one more time. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 10. Yeah. And all that have not fins and scales. No in fins the, and scales. In the seas uh -huh. and in the rivers of all that move in the waters. Of all that move in the waters. And of any living thing. Of living thing. You see that? It's living. It's the sea wasps and sea. It lives. Doesn't it live? Let's go to the Bible. Let's see what God said. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. And let's start at verse, let's start at verse 10. The book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 10. Yes, sir. And God called the dry land earth. Yep. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. Mm -hmm. And God saw it was good. Yep. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. He said bring what? what? Bring forth grass. Did he limit the grass to only the area that was dry land? He said, bring forth the grass. Go ahead. The herb yielding seed uh -huh. and the fruit tree yielding fruit uh -huh. after his kind, uh -huh. whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Mm -hmm. And the earth brought forth grass. It brought forth grass. And herb yielding seed uh -huh. after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, mm -hmm. and God saw that it was good. God saw it was good, that he brought forth all this thing. See that? You'll read that. you say, well, see, all of that was just on dry land. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy. Let's jump down to verse. T -t 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 -t. Let's jump down to verse 20. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 20. Start at 19. Verse 19. Yeah. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Yep, here it come. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures. The what? The moving creatures. So he brought forth the moving creatures on a different day than he brought forth the fruit and the herb and the seed and all of that. These things were brought forth on two different days, Israel. Let's go back to Leviticus 11 real quick. And then we're going to jump to uh, 2nd Ezra. Read that thing one time. Leviticus 11 and verse 10. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 10. Yeah. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas. Yep. And in the rivers. Yep. Of all that move. All that what? All that move. All that move. He brought that forth on a different day, Israel. And I'm going to say something to you. I'm going to say something to you. We're just going to cut right to the chase. And we're going to keep going, right? We're going to go to a few more scriptures. But let's look at Leviticus, uh, chapter 11. And let's look at verse uh, 7, I believe. Let's look at that. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. Yeah. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, mm -hmm. yet he cheweth not the cud. Mm. He is unclean to you. He is unclean to you. Those things that are that are on the ground that have cloven. What did it say again? Read that again. The swine, though it divided the hoof, if it's got a divided hoof and cloven footed and yet it cheweth not the cud, that's unclean. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask you a question, Israel. Does broccoli have cloven feet and chew the cud? Do carrots and apples chew the cud? No, they don't. So while we say something like we can't eat seaweed and sea moss, 
because it don't move in the waters. But we got broccoli and corn and apples and oranges that don't chew the cut on dry land. Makes no sense, Israel. Matter of fact, let's go to Second Timothy. Let's go to Second Timothy, uh, chapter six and verse twenty. I'm sorry, First Timothy. First Timothy, chapter six, verse twenty. Let's read that. Yes, sir. First Timothy, chapter six and verse twenty. Yes. El O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Yeah. Avoid profane and vain babblings yep. and oppositions of science falsely so called that's what happens in your mind some of you brothers and sisters that's even keeping the commandments of god you have allowed what white man the caucasian man has said in his science classes to affect how you view the scriptures you doing that has now said see well plants do the photosynthesis or living god made a clear difference between moving and not moving when it comes to life Matter of fact, let's go to that. Let's go to Luke. Give me Luke chapter 12, verse 27. We're going to get to second answer, but we're going to get to this. We're going to get this first. Luke chapter 12, verse 27. Go ahead. The book of Luke chapter 12 and verse 27. Yes, sir. Consider the lilies. Consider the what? The lilies. This is a plant. Go ahead. How they grow. How they grow. They toil not. They what? They toil not. Toil is what? These things ain't moving around. They're not living. In the sense of what God is talking about living when it's talking about these things that move about on the earth or in the waters. Go ahead. They spin not. They spin not. They not walking nowhere, doing no work. Go ahead. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Yes. If then God so clothed the grass. Yes. Which is today in the field. Yep. And tomorrow is cast into the oven, uh -huh. how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? O ye of little faith. He's saying these things don't move. These things aren't living. You dig what I'm saying? Let's go to 2 Ezra. I'm just prove. We're just going to read it out the Bible. 2 Ezra, chapter 6, and we're going to start at verse 42. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 42. Here it come. Upon the third day thou didst command that the waters should be gathered in the seventh part of the earth. Yeah. Six parts hast thou dried up and kept them to the intent that of these some being planted of God and tilled might serve thee. So he's saying the things that's planted, saying that the planted of God is making reference to the man. Right. Go ahead. For as soon as thy word went forth. Now, as soon as the word went forth on the third day, what happened? The work was made. Mm. For immediately there was great and innumerable fruit. How many? Innumerable fruit. Innumerable fruits. Go ahead. And many and diverse pleasures for the taste. Mm -hmm. And flowers of unchangeable color. Uh -huh. And odors of wonderful smell. Yep. And this was done the third day. Day. That was done the third day. He brought forth all the fruits and vegetables and plant vegetation was brought forth on that day. Now let's jump over to verse 48. Second Nezra chapter 6 and verse 48. Yes. For the dumb water mm. and without life. So the dumb water without life, but already vegetation was created. How was it without life if vegetation or the, the sea moss or the seaweed equals to something that's living in the waters. Read it again. For the dumb water. He called it dumb water. And without life. Without life, but vegetation was already created. Brought forth living things at the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. That all people might praise thy wondrous works. The living thing was brought forth after the vegetation was created. So again, this opposition of science that's in your mind, that's what is confusing you. Let's jump to this. Give me a uh, Sirach chapter three, verse 18. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter three and verse 18. Yes, sir. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt find favor before the Lord. That means, again, everything, everything that you learned in your science classes and your in your uh, what the, what they call those classes, biology and chemistry, all that stuff you learned in science, 
all the plant-based science that you learn you gotta you gotta decipher that thing through the scriptures god said he brought forth living creatures on a different day that vegetation was made come on verse 19 many are in high place mm -hmm. and of renown mm -hmm. but mysteries are revealed unto the meek yep for the power of the lord is great mm. and he is honored of the lowly See, that's it that's it that's it the power of the lord is great meaning if he said he brought forth living creatures on a different day than he brought forth vegetation, you got to trust that more than you trust the science that you learn in ninth grade. You got to trust that more than what your chemistry or biology or sea uh, oceanography or whatever it is that you're studying to make you assume that this is a living creature in comparison to what God said moving and spin and toil represent in reference to a living creature. You think I'm saying? Let's go to this. Let's go to Sirach chapter 10. Let's get that one. Sirach chapter 10. Which verse you want, sir? Verse 1, I'm sorry. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus chapter 10 and verse 1. Yeah. A wise judge will instruct his people. Yes. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Come on. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. Yes. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. So, Israel, we got to make sure that we keeping our line of intelligence intact. We not being dependent on what the world has now determined to be scientifically accurate. We got to go back to what God said first and foremost. All right. I'm not saying it's not things you can study and learn upon and, and grasp on, but this has to be the foundation of truth. This has to be the foundation of your scientific understanding. What God said first is what is accurate. All right. Let's jump to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse five. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord. <clears throat> excuse me. Thus saith the Lord. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Meaning you put all your faith, all your hope, all your understanding in what the white man has put in his science books. That's where your trust is. Not in what God's word says. Nope. I'm going to put it in this. I'm going to put it in what I learned in uh, fifth grade uh, social studies, uh, third grade uh, science class. You're going to put it all in there. You got to trust what God said first and foremost. Give me one more. Let's go to Sirach chapter uh, 4 verse 27. Ecclesiasticus chapter 4 and verse 27. Yeah. Make not thyself an underling to a foolish man. So again, like we just read, it just said that a wise judge is prudent. But if you see I'm dealing with a with a judge or a, a, a leader that is obviously applying the commandments of God first and foremost, but he's teaching me things that aren't in alignment with the scriptures, you gotta you gotta really question yourself because you're gonna be judged for following leaders that are not first and foremost making the Bible their foundation and instead making now whatever the world says their foundation whatever science says their foundation whatever isaac newton and and charles darwin said that's their foundation of understanding the truth so with that israel i hope you understand it's okay it's not a sin to eat seaweed or sea moss or any of these vegetations that are created because broccoli and carrots don't chew the cud with that we say shalom we used to scream black power while heron was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth